Hi, this is Terry. Welcome back to my channel. Yes, it's been a while, but I brought company. So, hey Zeke, welcome. For those of you who don't know, this is my husband of 27 and a half years. Y yeah, we're, we're still <laughs> barely. <laughs> but it's, it's <laughs> haven't taken you out in the trash yet, which brings up this week's topic. <laughs> Which is uh, call my agent. <laughs> which is death cleaning. I know that sounds incredibly morbid, but the way I even found out about the Swedish art of death cleaning by uh, Margarita Magnuson, I, maybe it's the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning. Um, so was, it doesn't hurt. It does. It well, no, it hurt. Might hurt psychologically and physically if you're lifting up big things. It it might. A couple months ago, I picked up a book by Margarita Magnuson called um, "The Swedish Art of Living Exuberantly," and in it, she mentioned her book, "The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning." In in it, she talks about going through your stuff and thinking very thinking a lot about all of your stuff. And of course, that brought up Marie Kondo. You know, the one who was really popular during the pandemic. And didn't you do some cleaning and folding? and stuff that I mess up when I put away your clothes on the rare occasions when I actually do laundry. Yes, I learned how to fold my t-shirts. <laughs> what I actually found when we decided to start purging some of our stuff was that that was completely overwhelming and unrealistic. And so we started to go through things as it's convenient. Like before we went on a trip recently, I went through and purged out all of my travel and small size toiletries and um, some, some of my drawers and even a little bit of my closet and just put all the stuff into bags, threw it into the garage for you to deal with. <laughs> Is that where all that came from? That's where all that came from. Um, you know, one night we were, you know, we're in the kitchen, we're waiting for something to cook. And so we decided to, maybe I was just a little frustrated with a drawer being a little messy. And so we grabbed a bag out of the garage and went through all of the drawers in our kitchen and then another time we went through all of the stuff on top of the, the cabinets. So little by little, we've been going through and getting rid of a lot of our, our stuff. And then when we were in a, we did a home exchange over Thanksgiving. And while we were there, we were in this two bedroom plus an office with a two bath place. And it was really very minimal in terms of the stuff that they had. And so Zeke, you found a book, Everything That Remains on Minimalism. Yep. And um, we also got to talking about how we really liked, we loved our visit to Denver and we loved um, the idea of continuing to live a little bit more of a nomadic lifestyle. And that means either renting out our house or doing home exchanges, which means making it so that it's very easy for people to come in and enjoy our home. Absolutely. Which means having less stuff. Less stuff is is helpful. Absolutely. And I will say, the more you do it, the more you'll do it. Yeah. The, I mean, now every day, if I'm not purging something or getting rid of something, I feel like I've missed an opportunity to not just declutter, but to um, get rid of the things that are taking up space energetically, physically, and psychologically. One of the hardest things that I've had to let go of, and I think Marie Kondo talks about this in her book, and I think even Margareta Magnuson talks about in hers, is um, just because you bought it doesn't mean you have to keep it. And I think a lot of the way that I was raised is is to get rid of something um, that you just might need is very, very wasteful. And I don't know if you have a similar challenge around that, but letting go of the just in case I might need it or... I spent money on it. It's still useful. It would be wasteful to get rid of it. And then it hits me how long I've held on to it and how many times I've moved it from one place to the other and how closely uh, collectors are just organized hoarders. Yeah. And one of the things we're also doing is taking a look at around our house now that the kids are out pretty much. Um, we're refining and we're updating. And we had had on top of the bathroom cabinets, two mismatched containers, you know, for my hair dryer and curling iron and um, also for like your shaver parts and stuff like that. It was like, you know what? I think we deserve to have things that are nice. So we went to Target or Target, you know, to buy three matching baskets and, and it's really updated. Upgraded the whole room. <laughs> completely different <laughs> it's all new it's all new. it's all new so just want to know from the rest of you have you 
thought about what kind of a mess you might be leaving for anybody else to clean up after you die. I, I know that sounds super... <laughs> Happy holidays! I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but mm -hmm. I know my parents had to, I mean, my mom especially had to deal with stuff with her mom and then also with my dad's parents. And the idea of having to go through and deal with all of that, or having our kids have to deal with all of that, is not a gift that I want to leave upon our departure. No. No. So with that, um, thanks for watching. It's been a while, a little bit out of practice. Um, but let go of perfection, take some risks, and above all, above all else, have some fun. Have some fun. <laughs>